Welcome to Web Scraping with Beautiful Soup. I'm Manuel Gadi. Beautiful Soup is a Python library that helps to parse, to interpret HTML and Excel and XML files and then transform and then navigate with this with the tags and contents to actually to extract uh, the data that is within the XML and the and the HTML and HTML5 and XML are the most common content that we find on the internet. So if we're interested in the web finance.yahoo.com and then we go here and search for Telefonica MC for example and then we find the data for telephone we click statistics and we're interested in grabbing this information market cap 36.73 billion enterprise value 104 20, uh, 104 billion 27 million trading PE 11.71 so if we want to grab this information and bring it in, into a data set to a data frame and then into an Excel how do we do that? How do we go about doing this task? Well, we can use uh, web scraping for that. And web scraping will interpret the HTML and CSS and JavaScript that is inside a, a web page. And the tool that we can use to, to do that, to interpret the tags and the classes and the, and the IDs of the HTML that we're going to use is beautiful soup. Let's by seeing a very simple HTML. So HTML has the HTML tag and then the close tag that has a bar at the end. The bar doesn't go at the end here, it goes at the beginning of the of the closing tag. So the tag is inside a, a smaller and a greater sign. We call this sometimes a diamond. And then we have head and we have body. Head is all where all the configuration of the page goes and body is where everything that you see in the page goes. For example, if I include title here and I say tables and then I save this file, save as, I'm going to save as 000 tables HTML and then if I come here and double click, I will be able to see a empty HTML with the title tables. If now I come back here and include a head one tables header, come back to the page and do control F5, I should see the table header. On top of the tag H1, I could put as well um, attribute style with the value color blue. That is a kind of a CSS uh, cascade style sheet that will define the color of the tables is equals to blue. Let's just test it. Come back here, double click it, and now it's blue. However, lucky enough, most of what we're going to be scrap scraping is going to be da data is normally structured into tables, and tables we can include it with table. Let's say border equals to one, so we can see the border. If we save it and refresh our table we're not going to see anything it doesn't it doesn't include the table if we say data in the table here and refresh it we still not see the table because to actually see the table we have to include a tr that tr actually means um, table row However, if we include the table row, we can see the table row has just appeared here, but the data in the table is outside the table row. It's because we can only include table data, data into the table, inside a table data tag that must be inside a table row. What it means that it's like including a table row and then table column, but this is not table column. And I'll show you why. And now you can see that the data is inside the table. And I can include, let's put it on, on the same line and include three rows here, three columns. I will see that I have three columns now here. 
However, what happens if I change it, the table data, and then say table row here? So I'll do the opposite. I'll do the opposite order. I will say data first, and they, and then row later. What's going to happen? The table is not in the correct order. Therefore, the table data is not as table column because you would generate the confusion that you can include the table column first and then the table row. And that's not the order. The correct order is table row and table data. And that helps a lot for us to scrape uh, with uh, beautiful soup. For example, if I want to include a new row, I have to include the row first and then include the three columns. Let's see how it, what happens in the HTML. So now I have the row one, column one, row one, column two, and row two, column one, and so on and so forth. Let's bring it to the beautiful soup, to notebook. I bring this, the, our HTML to a string variable here in Python and simply run this. Now I have the string in here. I can use the, the library beautiful soup, the BS4, and then import beautiful soup and pass the source code here and say, well, basically this is a HTML5. I'm just being specific here, but anyway, this is the default anyway. So I'm getting the soup. And what's the soup? Um, if I call for the soup here, we won't get anything different from what, I, what I've entered, but soup is something of a type. It's an object of beautiful soup, meaning that it actually parsed the, the HTML already. So if I enter beautiful soup title, I'm able to get the title, the tables that I've entered. And now I can enter title.text, and title.text will actually return the text that is inside the title. So if I want to tag completely with everything, because sometimes I may be interested in the in the actual attributes that the tag has, but in most of the cases I'm just simply interested in the text that is inside. And what about TD? Remember that TD, I have many TDs. So if I ask for the first TD in here, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get the first, if I get, if I ask for TD like this, I get the table row, TD, and so forth. And if I get as for the text, I'm actually getting the first row. How do I get all the TDs? Because if I'm only getting one with, if I ask for the TD like this, I have to use soup.findAll. So soup.findAll actually is going to return something that is like a list. So the type of this object is actually is a result set. So it's like a set or a list. But the important is that in this case it's six elements. So you have six elements in here because we have one row, second row, three rows, third row, fourth row. And that's this is actually that's not a row, sorry, that's the column. Column one, two, and three, and then sec third fourth, fifth, and sixth. It actually is iterating on all the TDs and ignoring the TRs. But anyway, that's the simplest way we can we can go about it. We, you're going to see why. Because if I simply do a four item in all the TDs, like this one, and sorry for the name of the variable, that's uh, in Spanish now, so we're going to call it all TDs in here, and then I get all the data row column one, two, three, and four. In other words, what it, what's going to happen is that I can create a four I in rows. So this is actually iterating on the all rows, and this one is iterating on the columns. And if I do that, I can go. Wow, well, I'm getting you know, for row, for row zero and column 
I'm getting the row zero, column zero, row zero, column one, and so forth. And that's the data, that, the value that was there inside. So I'm able to grab everything because I've done this magic of going range and, and like this. So how, is, how do I go about, now that I know how to use Beautiful Soup, scraping the original uh, page that we wanted to do from Yahoo? Well, first of all, I need to grab this page and I need to use URL Lopen. So I'm going to bring the page and paste it here. Basically, I'm going to grab this page, but just for grabbing the page, I'm not actually using Beautiful Soup. I'm using the library called URL Lib uh, and then getting URL open from that. So I'm getting the source code. If I print the source code here, what am I going to get? It's a very ugly thing that has all the HTML. Basically, it's the same thing as coming to the web page, right clicking here and saying view the page source. So I can see all this ugly HTML thing that you can see in here. So in here I'm seeing the same the same sort of thing. So it doesn't matter, the source code has all that data. I don't need to worry about it. I just have to pass it to Beautiful Soup as I did with the original HTML that we played. Say, well, basically this is a HTML5. And then Soup will then interpret. And if I call for the title, now I'm getting the title that appears in here. The tef something blah blah blah. So that's the title that I get. And if I ask for page one, that's gonna give me the first page one that appears in the page. And the first page one that appears in the page is um, Telefonica. And if I ask for the first TD, it's gonna give me market cap intraday. What if I get all the TDs, and I'm going to call again all TDs here. Well, all the TDs, I can go just to understand, as I can see that the, the first row, the first column has the actual value of the, the key, and the actual values on the second column, I can see that I have to play a game of row one, column one, and column two. So if I get all TDs, and say, well, by the way, give me the text of the row of the value zero, and then I get all TDs of value one. I'm actually getting market cap and then getting the actual value of market cap. So if I get all TDs again for the second and getting all TDs for the third, I'm getting the market enterprise value and the and then the value of the enterprise value that is a hundred and four thousand or billion, sorry. And in the end of the day, the number in the end of the day, I will understand that if I get the length of all TDs, I get one one eight elements. And I know because it's two per row that if I divide it by two, I have fifty nine rows. So if I transform it into interpreter. I have the number of rows and then the number of columns is two. So yes, by running this, I have number of row 59, number of columns. To run this magic um, four, and I'm gonna grab all the market cap and its value, the key and the value, the key and the value, and so on and so forth. So I can run this and transform it into a table and do a simplified version of the transformation, so that I get the field and, and the value. And to actually scrap the data, uh, we're gonna see that in class. But anyway, I'm gonna run this safe Yahoo, just to grab the data from Yahoo. For many companies, that's gonna be the stock that we're gonna see here. So I'm importing a Yahoo ticker file that in actually importing many companies, Google, Microsoft, Facebook. So I'm getting the DF here. 86 different companies creating this scrapped name and doing a simplified um, doing a version here a four version for each of the 86 companies i'm actually grabbing the the source code passing it to beautiful soup using h1 to get the name of the company and then got it getting all the tds and say storing it into the df so if i run this i should get all the companies 
as you can see it goes very quick once it completes i can save the come back here and open it. and here i have it